everyone, and welcome back to So You Want to Learn Commander. It is unscripted as always, so bear with me as I try to communicate. Thank you all for coming back. So today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, this is going to be what I call Commander Spotlight moving forward, where I take a commander that a friend of mine has requested, I play it myself, or one that I just find interesting to explain, and break down a typical EDH deck focusing on one strategy, and uh, trying my best to explain how the deck functions, how the deck operates, and what to expect when playing it. So, uh, as someone close to me has recently uh, picked up Taller and the Sky Summoner, I figured I would break it down. So, here we go. Taller and the Sky Summoner. What is he? What does he do? And how do you play him in the Commander format in Magic the Gathering? So, Taller and the Sky Summoner is a 2-2 uh, Merfolk Wizard that, for 4 mana, that whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying. So we can already obviously see some synergies and payoffs that might, you know, collect with that sort of a description. It's going to be a lot of cheap spells, going to be some blue token buffers, and a lot of card draw. So let's get into it. Alright, so why would you want to play Tolaran the Sky Summoner? Well, you are playing mono blue. It is the card draw color after all, and if you like drawing a lot of cards from cheap mono blue cantrips, then this is the deck for you. Okay? If you like go wide token decks, blue normally isn't known for this, but this is one of the few exceptions. If you are spamming very cheap spells that trigger Tolerant every time they are cast, notice that it does not say once per turn, so whenever you cast it, you get a token. Um, then this deck might be for you if you're trying to find a token strategy outside of Naya or green or red or white. And of course, what is a mono blue deck without the interaction? You will have a commanding position at the board to decide the the flow and the back and forth of the game with your counter spells, which some people very much like. The downsides, why might you not want to play Tolaran the Sky Summoner? Well, first and foremost, table politics. You know, we all know that there is a certain stigma around certain colors. Um, you know, certain colors have been able to uh, escape that rather than uh, <laughs> uh, adopt it, but blue, blue definitely has a, a certain connotation to it, and especially a mono blue deck, so coming to the table, you have already made some enemies, uh, even if they don't say it, you've already made some enemies from the outset, so uh, it is a little bit more of a hostile playing field when you come with a mono blue deck. Um, secondly, lack of ramp. Um, the deck that I suggest, or the deck list that I will be suggesting, uh, does have uh, some reduced mana count for the sheer fact that your overall mana curve is going to be anywhere between 1 to 3, so the reduced mana is warranted, but you know, for somebody who likes having an abundance of mana at all times, then uh, this deck might not be good for you. Um, and if you like complex, intricate strategies, alternate win conditions, I will suggest some alternate win conditions, but the main, the main focus we would have on this deck is creating tokens and going face for combat damage. If that's not your cup of tea and it's not over the complicated game plan, then Tolerant might not be for you. And a funny little haha -ha addition that I've added on at the end is you just have general empathy for your friends. <laughs> Even when I play a mono blue deck or any sort of uh, control deck, uh, I, I, I feel just as dirty uh, playing it myself um, as watching somebody else play it or playing against it. So uh, if, if you're not that ruthless <laughs> and want everyone at the table to enjoy the game as much as you do, then this deck might not be for you. All right, moving on. All right, so what is the general game plan when it comes to Taller and the Sky Summoner? Well, we've touched on it from uh, a few points to points, but laying it all out. So your deck is going to be filled with a large majority of cheap spells. These are going to be your ops, your ponders, your brainstorms, your um, preordains, so on and so forth. These one mana spells you're very easy to pump out that also do refill your hand. And, uh, obviously, whenever you cast a spell, you're going to be creating, uh, creating a Drake token. So, uh, any, any quick spell that draws you more cards and keeps the game plan going. 
obviously the second big part of this deck is going to be making tokens. Well, you know, that kind of fits hand in hand with the first one. Make a crud ton of Drake tokens uh, as fast as you can, and you will have the counter spells to protect Tolaron from anyone's removal if all goes well. And that, that's where you should be focusing your counter spells. Um, it may be very tempting to uh, you know burn through your counter spells just having fun as a blue player denying everything but it would be my personal recommendation to always keep at least one counter spell in your hand if anyone tries to remove Talran because your your linchpin of this whole deck is Talran and if he gets consistently removed to the point where you can't play him then you're gonna have a hard time um, I mean Next critical step is going to be buffing your tokens. Uh, as you can see through the favorable winds, uh, there's other uh, things like gravitational shift, uh, candle keep, inspiration, uh, anything that gives board buffs to your tokens. That will just make swinging face a little bit easier. Uh, it's something that is not often found in blue, but it does have some options. So those are definitely a necessity in this deck. And then it's as simple as swing face. Take your opponent's life down to zero and have a good time while doing it. So here is what I think would be a good breakdown for the deck in general, okay? So as I mentioned before, uh, there's going to be a slightly reduced amount of lands due to the fact that your overall mana curve is going to be anywhere from 1 to 3, so you could fit in a couple more of those critical spells that trigger Talrand. So I say two wraths. With mono blue, wraths are uh, not as applicable. I mean, there's... As far as I'm aware, there's no direct destroy blue rounds, so it'd be stuff like Devastation Tide, River's Rebuke, mass bounces back to your opponent's hand just in case things get too out of control. So anywhere from two to three, but I I wouldn't make them the vast majority because they are. If you have the budget for the cheaper bounces like Cyclonic Rift, definitely include those. But the more budget uh, mass bounces are, you know five six uh seven mana so sometimes a bit too much for our mana curve so obviously you're going to want to fill your deck up with cheap card draw so uh you know there are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of cheap budget options for this so you don't need to break the bank while doing it just in spells counter spells that draw a card arcane denial it's great for this um similar cards like dissolve I, I don't remember a couple of the cards by name but um yeah anything that refills your hand while drawing you and uh triggers to all run all right as usual it's just a standard for me in most of my edh decks anywhere from three to five mana rocks just to round up the mana curve and uh you know help uh, help make the game flow a little bit easier uh as always i highly recommend cards like the celestis um you know, it's card draw, and it's a mana rock, and it's a life gain. I can't get behind that enough. Guardian Idol, it's a blocker on a stick as well, as well as being a mana rock. Uh, so definitely a good auto-include there. So this deck is not going to be as creature-heavy as other decks. Uh, ironic, I know, seeing as how creatures are going to be the main way that we win the game, but I say this as in creatures um, that are actually physically put into the deck, not generated. So what you're going to want to be looking for for creatures with this deck is not creatures that are going to be swinging face and doing the lethal damage. You're going to be wanting things that help support your overall game plan, things that help draw your cards, things that help support your uh, your flyers in the air. So, um, you know, off the top of my head, um, the new Alondra card from uh, Jumpstart is amazing in this deck. Um, you'll see that as a payoff later on. Um, she creates tokens and she uh, buffs your tokens, so that's that's fantastic. Uh, Wave Break Hippocamp, uh, that's another one. You know, you're going to be casting a lot of spells in your opponent's turn, so that helps you create tokens, draw cards. <laughs> you know, that's 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 you know what more can you ask for um so so creatures that you are looking for for this deck will be support to the game plan not necessarily the win cons themselves okay and then obviously um your win condition cards would be cards like alondra cards like candle keep inspiration and anything that gives a mass buff to your board obviously there is no direct win conditions unless you choose to include them which we will discuss later um but apart from that, uh, just you are looking for things. Obviously, the main portion of the game is th uh, just slamming down those very cheap spells to get those tokens. And um, yeah, just anything that has, is a mass board buff and helps you, uh, you know, close out the game. 
Obviously, you know, no mono blue deck would be complete without his fair share of counter spells. I'd consider that under interaction, so I'd run anywhere from, you know, 7 to 10, just to, uh, you, you can run more, you can run less, but just to make sure you do have, uh, you know, some ability to affect the field, and more importantly, the ability to protect Tolerant. So that's that. That's the main uh, main thing you want to consider here. Okay, so what are some high synergy cards you want to look for? Well, um, as I brought up before, Alondra. Uh, whenever you draw your second card, you create a direct token, and when you draw your fifth card, uh, your board gets buffed X. Um, by XX. Amazing card. It's a win condition and it supports Talran's uh, token generation. So anything that puts more flyers on the field, that could be a good support creature, which leads into Murmuring Mystic. It's not the Drake tokens, but the bird tokens serve the exact same purpose as the drake tokens and they will get the exact same flying buffs from uh, your gravitational shifts from your favorable winds and so on and so forth so any any mono blue or colorless that will give you extra tokens and extra damage to put up on the field that's what you need to be looking for and obviously your bread and butter with this deck is going to be cheap spells winged words is a great example because you know all the creatures uh, are going to be flying in your deck, so you won't have to worry too much about paying full cost for that. But cards that trigger Talran, trigger Alondra, trigger Murmuring Mystic, and draw you cards. Those are going to be what you're wanting to look for. Okay? And so now, to close out the video, let's talk about payoffs. How do you win the game? Okay? Uh, so obviously, we have discussed the main win condition is swinging out face and, uh, you know... Um, reducing health total to zero, and that is considered here, but uh, for somebody who might want to switch things up a little bit, uh, we have a couple of our alternate win conditions here. So the obvious one is a gravitational shift as an example of just something that will, let's just say you have, you know, 20 odd tutus on the field, you know, if your opponents are dead at that point, I don't know what's going on, but you slap a gravitational shift down and that immediately turns into 40 damage right there. So, or 60, 80, I don't know, I can't do math, but any massive board buffs should be enough to clear out the game um, opposite things on the board withstanding. Um, another possible win condition um, to include with your support cards is Triska Decafile. So, uh, seeing as how you're going to have a lot of cards in your hand that draw you more cards, and you're going to have a lot of draw engines in this deck, um, you know, have, well, for one, having no maximum hand size, always working great, and uh, being able to manipulate your hand up to 13 cards uh, is a possibility. So uh, for a, if for some whatever reason the opponents are controlling the board a little bit too hard and you can't get your tokens in, then this serves as a perfectly valid option to possibly close out the game. And last but not least, uh, I, from what I've seen of this deck being played, you burn through your deck pretty dang fast. Um, especially with some of the enchantments like uh, Teferi's Agent's Insight, that uh, you can get through your deck pretty naturally, even without self mills. So, another alternate win condition could be a Laboratory Mystic uh, or Maniac, because you know, just with blue in the counter spells that you have, being able to survive, uh, you know, um, a lot more of the deadly spells that target you with the counter spells and just e existing until you can burn through your whole deck is an option with Laboratory Maniac. So uh, I hope uh, I explained it well. If you have any questions about how I would play Tolerant or any questions about interactions, uh, possible card advantage, good synergy, drop them down in the chat. Uh, that does it for now for Tolerant. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Your views are always appreciated. And keep an eye out for the next Commander Spotlight. That's all for now. Bye-bye.